Jesus Christ. They sang this song a while ago. It woke me up this morning. Brother Murray and I often kid about, he said, she'll point, he'll come over to me and point to Sister Donna and say, well, she woke me up too early this morning. But let me tell you something. The fact is that we can be appreciative of the fact that God was able to get us out of our bed, even though sometimes we may not like the arising. But let me tell you something. It's what you do with the day, regardless of how you wake up in the morning. Amen. Praise God. If you have your Bibles, would you turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 12? I would like to read one verse there. However, there's many that and could evolve around this, but I praise God this morning. Late last night as I was looking over this, I done thought I had my message all prepared. How, do you, how many know this morning that God can just turn things around in a heartbeat, regardless of how much time you spend, regardless of how you work at the Word and how you take the Word in, God's able to speak to your heart and just turn things around at the last moment. And that's what He did with me last night as I was praying and seeking the Lord. And I went to bed, I thought, okay, God, I've got it all ready for tomorrow and everything is done. And only to get up early this morning and the Lord said, no, this is what I want for you today. The first, first Corinthians chapter 12, I just want to read verse 12. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. I'd like to read it again. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. Father, I thank and I praise you this morning for your love, God, and for your written word. And Lord, I thank you that you are the living word this morning, that you live and move and have your being inside of us. And Lord, I ask you right now to anoint every listening ear by that's here under the sound of my voice and those by airwaves. God, I pray this morning that you'll anoint their ears that you'll hear what the Spirit is speaking to the church for the day that we're living in. And God, for your glory, anoint and bless in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. I've titled this message this morning, There's One Body. Church, as I look around in these last days that we're living in, I really believe that it's time that the churches in general get back to being one body in Christ. Even though there are many denominations this morning, I could stand here and name some of them, but let me say this this morning. The nomination barriers need to be broken down and realize we are one body. We are all trying to be that one bride of Christ whom he's promised to come back for. And it's time the church in general, the church as a whole, becomes that one body. There's so much striving about this church, that church, his church, her church. But let me tell you something. When we stand before Christ, that's not going to work, church. That's not going to be part of the issues. We need to learn to get together down here if we plan on spending eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ as his body, as his bride. We need to get under. We need to get adorned right here and start coming together as one body. I'd like to talk this morning a little bit about the members' relationship to each other and to the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, we have respects unto the Lord, and we are members with God. And it says in that last part of that verse, it said, so also is Christ. As Christians, we take on Christ-likeness. It's time the church realizes the very word Christian means to be Christ-like. Where is the Christ-likeness anymore in the church? Things are creeping into the churches today that have no place, have no precedence into the house of God, much less in a child of God that's calling themselves a Christian. I think about sometimes the reproach that's being brought on to Christ as we are supposed to be portraying him, how our relationship with him should be developed more and more every day that we live. When we get up in the morning, we need to lift our hands and say, Good morning, Lord. I thank you for the new day that you've given me. I thank you, Lord, that you start me on my way today. And whatever comes my way today, help me, Lord, to remember that that there's nothing that can happen to me today that you and I can't handle together as long as he's on our side and
and God be for us. Let me tell you something, regardless of what the enemy throws at you, this morning, church, and throughout your life, you've got to hold on, as our brothers sang a while ago, hold on to the unchanging hand. Hold on to the nail-scarred hand. If we're going to be a body, it doesn't matter the trials of life that you face, as long as you know God has got you by the hand. You can make it, church. You can be strengthened in the power of his might. And the church today is going through one trial after another. But let me tell you something. As a child of God, as a Christian, knowing that you are a member of the body of Christ, before you came to the Lord, you may have been bent on doing your own thing your own way. But let me tell you something. When you come into the household of faith, you've got to realize that one of those attributes of being a member of the household of faith is that you must live by faith. It's spirit under spirit. We've got to allow the spirit of God to guide our every movement. We've got to allow the Lord to direct our path and seek his will for our lives. And there's no longer to be headstrong in the things that you want to do and your own fleshly desires. Because let me tell you something, as surely as you know that you're living in the last days and he's promised to pour out his spirit, let me tell you this morning and let me give you an admonition. The devil hasn't left down. He is rising up every place that he can rise up and he's bringing out all the attacks that he can bring out against the army of Christ. And church, it's time that we get together. The word of God says, let the strong bear the infirmities of the weak. This is one of the ways that membership can be strengthened in the body of Christ. It's time that we take heed to one another that's around us. You're no longer somebody. One, two, yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now we got power. Hallelujah. It's time that we take on the Christ likeness and get our own personalities out of the way. We need to learn to be molded in the image of Christ. And let me tell you something, Christ did not go around this earth portraying himself. He portrayed God the Father. He was all about the Father's business. And it would do the church today good if we learn to be about the Father's business and become more like Jesus and be considerate of one another, pay attention to one another and what they're going through. It's time the church learns to be more sensitive than they've ever been before because all the power of hell is coming against the church. And it's time we join forces instead of pulling apart and pulling away from one another and try to be an Allen. It's time we join forces. There is strength in unity this morning. The word of God declares it. And it's time that we get unified in the body, not just one church, this church, that church, but as a body of Christ this morning. God wants unity brought back together. How are we ever going to live eternity in heaven if we can't get along down here? Child of God, it's not fighting against one another. It's lifting up the name of Jesus Christ. And when one is hurting, let me tell you something this morning. When one is hurting, the whole body should be hurting and interceding and believing God to intervene on their behalf. When one person is rejoicing, we need to learn to rejoice with them. I watched last night in our one service we had, there was people getting touched and the minister that was holding is holding our crusade. He said to them, he said, church, can't you rejoice when somebody else is getting their miracle? Can't you rejoice with them? Oh, child of God, I'm not any happier when somebody else gets their miracle as it would have been my own miracle. I'm glad. I'm glad when the power of God reaches down and touches one another and it's time the church learns how to feel again. They've gotten themselves in such a hardened place. 
I'm telling you today, the church has become very hard and critical. They criticize one another and find fault. They spend their time picking this apart and picking that apart. Even when there's a minister of the gospel anointed and used by God, preaching and delivering what God has given to them and has labored for the glory of God. People are back in their pews trying to pick it apart, missing the very message that God is trying to bring to the church so he can be encouraged and so they can be lifted up. And it's time we get out of this mode and church get in to glorify it and praise in the Lord Jesus Christ and march onward as an army. When you go into, into armies and the the military they teach you how to work together they train you that you look out for the other soldiers back they teach you how to be looking out for one another and to go on and win victory after victory and it's time the church gets together and watch out for somebody else's back and hold them up in prayer you may not be able to change the situations in their life you may not be able to change those individuals but let me tell you something this morning the God that I serve the body of Christ that I'm in. I believe in the two agreeing together and touching anything on this earth that it shall be done. I still believe it is written and I believe that the word of God will carry forth and be effective until the Lord Jesus Christ comes back for his bride. And I want to be a part of that bride this morning. I want to tell you something this morning. We need to realize there's only one head. Everybody wants to be in control. Everybody wants to be the boss. And you'll find that more as you pastor. You have a lot of people with a lot of good intentions. But I got this to say to you this morning. If God wanted you in charge, he would have put you in charge. We need to realize this morning that the head of the body of the church today is the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's who you're to take the orders from. You're to walk according to his word. And if somebody tells you something that's contrary to the word, then you throw it out because it's no good. Everything that the Lord leads you to, everything that he takes you into, it will match up with his word. It will align to the word of God because it is what? Thus saith the Lord that counts in these days that we're living in. He is the head, church. We are a body. We are the members. The head controls our bodies. Our mind that God give us, our brain, should be in alignment to the word, and we should be filling our minds with more of the word every day. We put it off. Oh, I don't have time today to read the word. I don't, oh, then before long, you don't have time to pray. You become very busy, and the members of the church, the Christian people, are letting down in the things that will pick them up that will encourage them and help them to live day by day for the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's time the members, the members that are under the head, learn to be obedient, not just read the word, not just study the word, not just pray, but obey, church. You need to learn to walk in obedience as members at the head of Christ that Christ is trying to portray and lead his people. You have to learn as members of this body how to be in submission to the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the center of our joy. He is the center of our very walk with him. You cannot take the Lord out of control and yet have him in the center. He has to control remembering he's the vine and we're the branches. He is the vine. We are the branches. He is the one that should give us the life. He is life. He will give us life. But you cannot walk contrary to it and hold on. He's the foundation. We're just the stones. We're just the ones that he's putting in his building as he's building this body. He is the very foundation that we need to stand upon. Oh, 
church, I want to say this morning that as long as he's the foundation and you're building upon the word, you're building upon the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to make heaven your home. He's the very organism. We're the souls that reaches out to him. We need what God's got. We need everything that he'll give us this morning. And he's not going to give you any junk. He's not going to give you anything that would lead you astray from him. But you need to understand this morning that we have to count on him to bring us to a perfected state. And church, it's only going to happen if he sees the body coming back into a unity. I watch in our crusade that we've been having, there's not very many that wants to come out. There's not very many that's committed enough to set time aside to come to receive. Oh, that's just church again. They're having church again. They're just having another meeting. I want to tell you something. I've been in every meeting that it has been started and had been done for the past year. But let me tell you something. There hasn't been one humdrum service. There hasn't been one time that I was bored. I want to tell you, it'll only be as interesting as you allow it to be. You'll only be as hungry as you want to be. But let me tell you, it's time the church, the body of Christ starts to hunger and thirst for more of the Lord Jesus Christ. More manifestations of his power being poured out in the services that you have equipment to go out and live for him every day of your life. We wonder why the churches are weak and why they're struggling. It isn't God's fault, I assure you. God wants his people lifted up and strengthened. The word of God says let the weak say they're strong. Well, I'm not into lying, Pastor. I don't believe in lying. Well, I'll tell you what the Word of God says over in Romans chapter 4, 17. It says, let those things, call those things that are not as though they are. Let me tell you, you're never going to overcome anything if you don't start putting the Word of God into your life and allow the Word to come alive inside of you and live and breathe the Word, confess the Word. The devil's glowing and having a good time at the things that the church today is confessing. They're confessing all of their weaknesses. They're confessing everything negative that they can confess. And the power of life and death is still in the tongue because the word of God says so. And it's time the church aligns their very mouth to the word of God. It's time the members get strength and encourage one another. When you see someone falling and someone hurting, you go to them and you encourage them. You don't point your finger at them and say, oh, if you wouldn't do so much sinning, you wouldn't be in this shape. Let me tell you something. The word of God says still that many of the afflictions of the righteous, the righteous are the ones that are suffering. But that gives God a bigger chance to do the miracles that he can do in the lives of his people. You see, the sinners aren't going to glorify the God that heals their bodies and takes care of them because of the intercessory prayers. But it's up to us this morning to give witness unto the Lord Jesus Christ and lift up his name and tell him how much God loves them and how much God will do for them. And I'd rather be a member of God's army than I would in the enemies any day. How are we related to one another? We're related to one another by the bloodline of the Lord Jesus Christ. That royal blood that flows down through my veins flows through every child of his church. And that blood, that blood has never lost its power. I don't care what gender you are. I don't care whether you're big, little. It doesn't matter to me. I care whether the blood's been applied to your heart and the blood's been applied to your life and the royal blood is flowing down through your veins. And when that bloodline is the same as the bloodline that I carry, hallelujah, God and one is still the majority and you can get other members to join in if we learn to encourage one another, if we learn to lift him up and let the Lord do the rest of it. We want to set everybody else's life in order. 
And that's why the churches today are having a problem getting people in. Because when some comes in that are sin sick, some will come in maybe on drugs, some will come in on alcohol, or maybe they don't look too great. Maybe they're not dressed in the finest apparel, but I got news for you this morning. God still looks at the heart. He's still looking for the heart that's sold out to him. He's not looking at the clothes you wear. He's not looking at the money you got in your bank account. And I got news for you this morning. You would and have so much money in your bank account if you'd learn to give it out to the kingdom and let the kingdom of God be prospering. Let the kingdom of God be blessed. I want to tell you, we worry about laying treasures up here. It's time we learn to lay them up here. You give until it hurts. Church, I want to tell you something this morning. We wonder why churches are giving up and churches are letting down. It's because the army of Christ is letting down. I want to obey the word of God, but everybody doesn't want to do what God tells them to do in the word unless it suits their fancy. I want to tell you something this morning. You'll never get ahead with God. You'll never be blessed of God until you learn the precepts upon precepts this morning. The word means what it says, and it says very clearly what it means this morning. And I praise God this morning that I'm a member of the body of Christ. You see, sometimes we, sometimes we don't have our secular families to back us up I can speak for myself my secular family even my children they don't have a lot to do with me some of them do and some of them don't but early in the ministry when I first started out I remember my son looking at me and he said mom he said you're no minister God don't use women I said is that right well, no used to argue with him. He was a know-it-all teenager. You know how teenagers do. They know everything. They haven't been around, but they know everything. So you just learn to let them say what they got to say. I said, well, nevertheless, son, I said, I'm going by the hospital. There's somebody in the intensive care unit that needs prayer. And if you want to go along in, you can go along in. I'll, take, I'll get you in. He said, how are you going to get in? I said, just watch and see. So we walked into the hospital, and I told him what I, what I was doing, and didn't have one problem. I walked right on in. I said, come on, son, let's go. So he came along in, and I looked at the blood pressure and the monitors, and it was horrendous. This young man was struggling for his life. He was already out of it, church. And as I stood beside his bed, he wasn't a believer at that time. He once knew the Lord. He once served the Lord. But because of well-meaning Christians, he had his feelings hurt. He was intimidated. And so, therefore, he decided he wasn't going to go to church. And I walked up beside his bedside, and we began to pray. I said, son, you can join me, or you can just stand there and observe. It don't matter to me, because the God that I serve is going to do something, and he's going to do it right now. And I laid hands on him in his unconscious state, and I said, in the name of Jesus, be alive and turn back to normal. And just that quick, I watched the monitors, the blood pressure started to come down and it started to regulate itself and God roused him up. I want to tell you something. When we walked out of that hospital, he said, Mom, I got to give it to you. He said, maybe you do have a calling on your life. I said, it don't matter with me. You believe me or don't believe me, son. I'm going on. You didn't call me. God did. I said, and now we're on our way to a church service. Got to that church service and I was supposed to minister. My son was the type of person that when you go into the church, he would prop his knees up on the pew in front of him and just try to cozy himself to take a nap. And I thought, Lord, you keep him awake. I'm not fighting this flow either. It's up to you, God, to show him what to do. He sat on the front pew so there was no pews in front of him to put his knees up on. And he sat there very attentive. The anointing of God came upon me. And on the way home, we had an hour to drive to that service. And on the way home, he said, Mom, I got to give it to you. You really are called of God, aren't you? He said, you really can preach. He said, normally I'd go to sleep, but this time I didn't have an opportunity. I want to tell you something. God will prove himself. God will always come on the scene to back up his chosen and his called. Why are we members together, church? You got to hold your head up and realize God gave you a family, a family of God, and you got to learn to draw 
strength from one another as well as give them strength. It's not all about you taking, church. And I've praised God many a time for the family of God. That's all that held me sometimes, just knowing that someone was there praying for me. I never believed in airing everything to my people or anybody that I was around because invariably sometimes your feelings do get hurt and I'd rather protect them than I would anything else and I'll cry out to God and I'll walk. But I may tell you something. You want to receive miracles? You want to see receive strength? Start reaching out to somebody else that needs those miracles. Start reaching out to somebody else that needs your strength and God will in turn come on the scene for you. He he is that very present help. Glory to God. And I know, I know this morning God is the healer of the bodies that he's created only to bring glory and honor unto him. So don't worry if your secular family shuns you. Pray for them and believe God. And God will do what you ask him to do. He said if you delight yourself in him, he'll give you the desires of your heart. And it is my desire to see my family saved. And I've often told the Lord, I said, God, I may not stroll over this earth with them, but I want to stroll over heaven with them. I want them to make heaven their home. Church, we got to learn to care about one another. We've got to learn to come together in a unity and lift up the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're about your father's business this morning, let me tell you something. It don't matter what else goes on around you. You'll have the strength to stand in the hour of the adversity. When the trials come your way, you'll be strong enough and you'll have someone there to agree together with you. You'll have someone there. God will give you somebody. We are members of one body. It's not a bunch of bodies. We're a bunch bunch of members coming together in one body in unity for the Lord Jesus Christ as Christ is one he said I'm in you and you're in me and church if we learn to realize to wrap ourselves up in the Lord things will go better in our life it won't be a rose garden don't ever expect to walk with Christ to be easy Easy was when you was in the world and you did everything you wanted to do, when you wanted to do it, how you wanted to do it. Nobody was your boss. You just did whatever you, you felt like doing. But let me tell you something. It don't work that way when you're in the body of Christ and you belong to him. It's nevertheless, Lord, not my will, but thine be done. Whatever you would have me to do, let me do it with all that's within me. As unto you, I don't care if other people never see me. I came to grips with that a long time ago. I don't care if other people know what I do and what I don't do as long as I know that what I'm doing is pleasing under the Lord Jesus Christ that others get blessed that others receive the power of God and other lives are changed for the glory of God hallelujah that's what it's all about church not my will but his be done in this body that we are one member we are many members but one body as Christ loves the church we need to learn to love. You see, the one of the biggest rules of the being a member of the church of God, Christ's army, is love. He loved you and I enough this morning to forgive us, to hang on a cross. He hung there that every one of us could have life and have it more abundantly. He didn't have to. He wanted to. He had to come to grips with what he had to do. But let me tell you something this time. If Jesus showed us the perfect example and he came to terms with what he had to do when he came to earth, we need to come to terms with what he wants us to do. And that's lift him higher and be more like him every day that we live. That others cannot look at you and say, well, that's the reason I don't go to church. Think about it. That's the reason I don't go to church because so-and-so is there. And they don't do nothing but hurt and talk about me. Talk good, church. Speak good. If you have no good to speak, don't speak nothing excepting to the Lord. Take them to the Lord, and God will take care of them. He took care of you, and he can take care of me. Hallelujah. Let us all stand together this morning. Our dependence needs to be upon the Lord Jesus Christ. And if we acknowledge him in all of our ways... He's not going to forsake us, church. He'll go with us. Father, I just ask you this morning, Lord, to help us. Lord, if we've had things in our mind, if we've had things in our hearts 
that, Lord, are finding fault and criticizing someone else's work. Help us, God. Help us, God, to look through your eyes at what you have made them, at what you want them to be. And know, God, that you're in control. Father, I just ask you this morning, Lord, I know that there's not one person in here today that's not been hurt by church or someone in the church. But Lord, today I'm asking you, Father, to speak to their hearts and let them lay aside their hurts and let them get them under the blood that they can be a blessing to whomever and continue to lift you higher. If there's any in here this morning that wants special prayer, I invite you to come at this time and we'll pray and believe God for you. I'd ask the ministry to come and help me to pray this morning. And let's believe the Lord. Church, it's no time now to let down. It's no time now to stop in this race. But you know, just as we find fault with others, we need to look in the mirror and realize, am I to fault? Am I to blame? Is it my fault? And if not, and you can honestly answer that question to God, say, no, Lord, it's not. And he tells you it's all well. And listen to me this morning. He'll take care of those obstacles. You know, sis, a lot of people look at you and they say, why does she do everything she does? Are you the pastor's favorite? He's just, he just wrapped up. Let me tell you something. Lord just wants you to know. He uses you because you're faithful. And you're committed to him. It doesn't matter what people say about you. You're the one that will pray for them. And God will turn them around. Somebody has to be willing to pay that price. And you said, Lord, it doesn't matter to me what it is. I'm willing to do it. As long as I know that's what's pleasing to you. I will do it. And I'm going to tell you something. He is well pleased with you. And the commitment that you've had. There's been times you felt like not even crawling out of bed. Because of the hurts. Sis, don't let anyone do that to you. Keep your focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's there to bring you through. Father, we are double koya boya. Shandala boya. God, lift her up. Lift her up, Lord, and touch her this morning, God. Encourage her, Lord. Regardless of criticism, Lord, she's focused on you, Lord, for your glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No one can do it quite like you, sis. No one can do it like you. You're not somebody else. You be what God wants you to be. And let me tell you something. As you do it unto him, he'll take care of all the opposition that's been coming against you. They haven't walked a mile in your shoes. They haven't walked where you've been walking. Had they been walking where you've been walking, they would understand your heartbeat is still the Lord Jesus Christ. He's got you covered, sis. He's got you taken care of. Lift your hands this morning. Oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus right now. For your glory, God, for your glory this morning. Continue to let her be faithful, Lord. Continue, Lord, to use her. Father, for your glory, in the name of Jesus.
Father, in the name of Jesus, strengthen these hands right now, God. God, mold him and make him into what you would have him to be. And from this day forward, Lord, let him keep his eyes upon you. Let him have a single eye upon you, Lord God. Not looking to the right, not looking to the left, but God, let his heart beat be after you, God. And raise him up, Lord, and use him all the days of his life. And fill him full to overflowing, God. From the top of his head to the crown, Lord, from the crown to the foot, Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus. And God strengthen those hands and this body as he sells out to you, God. Brother, I, I, I hear the Lord saying, you can't keep nothing back for yourself. You can't keep a part of yourself back for you. You've got to just give it all to you. And then and only then will it work. It's hard. You know, I think sometimes it's easier for a woman to say, Lord, here, I surrender it all. And it is for a man. But I got news for you. That's why the Lord has raised up women because men won't do what they're supposed to do. Let me tell you something. People say, well, we're the weaker, but there's nothing weak about the women. They try to be respectful, but God is saying to you today, give it all. Don't keep a part back reserved for you. What is your name? Joel? Oh, what a name. Praise God. Let me tell you something. As Joel in the Bible was a prophet, God wants to use you as well. But it's only going to be coming that way to you if you will sell out 100%. Nothing left for Joel himself. Nothing but just more of God. Lift your hands. Just lift them. Stretch them toward heaven. I want you to focus on the Lord right now. And say, Lord, here I am. I want more of you than I've ever had before. And I'm giving myself to you for whatever you can do with it, Lord. Do it. Empty himself out, God, and fill it full of more of you, Lord, and that God will bring you glory and honor. Father, in the name of Jesus, and restore joy unspeakable, full of glory in his life. Joy, Lord, like he's never known. For surrendering to you, Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And Lord, may his heart always race after you. May his heart always, always race after you, Lord, and run into your arms, Father. And run into your name for your glory. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Brothers, do you want to pray for? you something brother God loves you I'm telling you God loves you and he's got so much more for you this will not always be your occupation if you exalt him and you walk humbly before him 
He will do what no one else has ever been able to do for you because He's looking at the heart. God, for your glory, in the name of Jesus. No need to be afraid, brother. No need to be afraid. God loves you. You have warm eyes. All you need to do is say, Lord, let me be a servant of yours. Here's my life. I'm giving it to you. Big and I may be strong, but I'm powerless without you. But with you, Lord, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Strengthen me today, God. Oh God, right now, and it's strength for his journey. And Lord, let his heart be after you, Father God. Lord, a total surrender. Lord, he needs you, God, like never before in his life. Lord, let him realize today that it wasn't his strength and his might that got him where he's at, but it was your spirit, your spirit, God, that has drowned him and held him. And Father God, Fire, fire, shut up in his bones, Lord. Lord, in the name of Jesus, he'll never be the same, God. More fire to burn. Burn, Lord, out the dross and the debris, God. Members of this body of yours, Lord, leading others to you, Father God. And Lord, let the hands be strengthened. Lord, let them be strengthened. Father, for your glory. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, make of him what he needs to be for your glory. Use him mightily, Father. Use him mightily, Lord, wherever he goes. He's not walking alone. Father, thank you this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Love you, brother. members into this one body for your glory be with them Lord keep them safe and sheltered in your arms and give them a, a very merry Christmas a very blessed Christmas Father in Jesus name Amen and